In my last video, I featured some yarn from breed specific wool that I had collected over the past several months. Today, I have the other half of that yarn haul to show you, and I have 10 more skeins of yarn to talk about. These yarns are from sheep breeds that you might not have heard of before, and most of these are pretty rare and hard to get. So if you want to see the rest of my yarn haul, then stay tuned for a show about yarn from lesser known sheep breeds. Hi everyone and welcome back to U University. I'm Dr. Kelly. It is such a beautiful spring day here in West Central Illinois. The sun is shining and the temperature is starting to warm up. We only have one more week of classes left before final exams and then it's summer break. The semester has gone by surprisingly fast and after the long cold winter we've had, I'm really looking forward to summer break. But let's get into today's topic. This is kind of a continuation of my last video where I showed 10 skeins of breed specific wool yarn and um, I talked about the characteristics of the yarn as well as the sheep and their wool. And I'm going to do that again today, but the yarn this time is a little more unique. Some of these breeds are nearing extinction and the ones the ones that aren't are usually raised for other things like meat, milk, and cheese production, but are not as commonly used for their wool. So you might not have heard of these sheep breeds before because they are so scarce or their wool is not readily available for fiber artists to use. But if you're interested in experimenting with these wools, I'll include links to all of the yarns I talk about today in the information box below. I will also link my last video down below so you can check it out in case you missed it. Um, I talk a little bit about how wool fiber characteristics are described, including fiber diameter, which is measured in microns, as well as staple length of the wool fibers. So if you're not familiar with those terms, you might want to watch that video first so you'll know what I'm talking about when I give you the specs of this yarn. Now most of these yarns I'm going to show you today have not been commercially processed. Um, a couple might have been, but for the most part they were hand spun either by me or by someone else that I bought it from. And most of them are the sheep's natural color. They haven't been dyed except for one. Um, so these are really specialized yarns that are unprocessed and created by hand. So they are just exceptional. I'm going to tell you right now that all of these yarns in today's video are in the rustic category, meaning that they are not the softest. Um, some are scratchier than others. None of these are in the merino category. So if you have princess skin or sensitive skin and you can't tolerate the feeling of anything but the softest fibers, then you probably want to steer clear of the yarns I'm going to talk about today. But I know that some of you will be excited to get a hold of this yarn and try it out for something different and new and natural. Also, a lot of the yarn I'm going to show you has limited yardage, so I may be making some small project with it or just swatching it. Um, because it's all kind of rustic yarn, it's going to be good for outerwear like coats and sweaters and winter accessories like mittens and hats. Probably not items that are worn next to the skin, especially around the neck and face. It's probably going to be a little too prickly and scratchy for that, for most people anyway. So I'm not going to go over potential uses for each of these yarns because for the most part, they're all going to be the same. Sturdy sweaters and things like that. But regardless of your wool preferences, I still think you'll find the information interesting. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with several wools that come from the islands around Scotland. And the first one I have to show you is this North Ronald's A yarn. It is a lovely hand spun yarn that I got from an Etsy shop called the Witchwood Spinner, uh, which is in the UK. And this is a two ply yarn that's very pleasant to the touch. 
uh, pretty squishy and lightweight. As you can see, it is the natural color of the sheep, which is creamy white with some flecks of gray in it. And for this 50 gram skein, the cost was $24. North Ronald's A sheep are an ancient breed of sheep that are small but very hardy. This breed is thought to be over 5,000 years old. They are in the family of short-tailed sheep found in various parts of Northern Europe. The majority of these sheep are still kept on the North Ronaldsea Island and require a unique farming system. In 1832, a stone wall was built around the perimeter of the island to keep these native sheep on the shore and off the land, which was reserved for other sheep breeds. It was this separation that probably resulted in the preservation of the North Ronaldsea breed, as it prevented crossbreeding, which has been the downfall of other native breeds. So this breed is virtually unchanged from the original animals. The largest flocks are feral and managed under a community shepherding system, which brings together the whole community several times a year. Three times a year, the North Ronaldsea sheep are gathered into stone enclosures, in June or July for shearing, in January to select animals to take to market, and in February to carry out a head count. Because they have been confined to the seashore by the wall encircling the island, the North Ronaldsea sheep have survived on a diet of seaweed. They are the only animals in the world, except for a certain lizard on the Galapagos Islands, that are able to entirely survive on seaweed, leading to its nickname, the seaweed sheep. In 2009, they were listed as endangered, according to the Rare Breeds Survival Trust, with less than 500 breeding females registered in the UK. The North Ronaldsays are a primitive breed, genetically the most primitive in the UK. They are small, fine-boned sheep with small heads, rarely exceeding 65 pounds, and only about 16 inches in height. Ewes have a face that slopes inward, and rams have big curly horns. Some ewes have smaller, backward-facing horns. Fleeces can be any color, from white to brown to gray, to black and even mixed colors with a staple of about four inches. It is medium in softness with a micron count of 28. So that's a little bit about the remarkable North Ronaldsea sheep and yarn. The next yarn I have to show you here, well, this one really isn't yarn, but I could only find raw wool. And this is from the Soy sheep. Yeah, this is fiber directly from the sheep, and it's kind of dirty. <laughs> I, I need to scour this and then comb it into something I can spin. So it's going to take a little bit of work to do that. As far as the feel of it, it does feel nice and squishy, and I can definitely feel some lanolin, but not a whole lot. And of course, this is the natural brown color of the sheep. And this uh, two ounce bag of raw fleece was $18.75. The Soay sheep is descended from a population of feral sheep on the tiny island of Soay in the St. Kilda archipelago. This island is only 250 acres total and it's located about 40 miles from the Western Isles of Scotland. The island got its name from the Old Norse word Soay, meaning island of sheep. This is another member of the European short-tailed sheep breeds. Like the North Ronaldsea sheep, they are much smaller than modern domesticated sheep, about one-third the size, but they're a lot hardier. They are highly independent and lack the strong flocking instinct of many domestic sheep breeds. They are pretty shy, and in response to predators, the group will usually scatter. Soways are highly variable in appearance. They can be solid black, brown, cream, or mixed colors. Some have a white underbelly and rump, and some have white markings on the face. They don't need to be sheared because they naturally shed their wool, which can be collected by hand in the spring and early summer. The rams have full curl horns that lend a majestic appearance. Some ewes have horns, while some don't. 
Rams weigh less than 90 pounds and ewes are around 55 pounds. Now it's often said that soy sheep make wonderful lawn mowers and they're often used for maintaining pastures and other grassy areas. They're especially good for eating broadleaf weeds as they prefer those over grasses. For example, they absolutely love fresh poison oak and blackberry bushes as they emerge from the ground. So they're a great natural vegetation manager. Soy are mostly raised for meat production, but they're also good producers of wool. Their fleeces vary in character, and some have even been compared to kiviat, which is the softest animal fiber anywhere. Now, I don't think my fleece is that soft, but it is pretty nice. The wool quality is usually in the medium soft range with a micron count of around 25 and a staple length of one and a half to four inches. So that is the soy sheep and fiber. Okay, next up is black Hebridean yarn, and here it is. This is a really beautiful two-ply yarn that was spun at a small mill in Scotland. This is another yarn that I got from the Witchwood Spinner on Etsy, and it was $14.68 for this 50 gram skein. It's very nice and squishy, and feels nice and cushiony in the hands. As their name says, they have black wool, so this yarn is the natural color of the black Hebridean sheep. Now a little bit about the black Hebridean sheep which produced this wool. These sheep originated in the islands off the western coast of Scotland, the Hebrides. They are similar to the Sway and North Ronaldsay sheep I just talked about in that they are also a primitive breed that is a member of the Northern European short-tailed sheep group. They are another small-sized animal with rams weighing less than 130 pounds and ewes around 80 pounds. But they're very hardy despite their body size. Hebridean sheep have solid black fleece which turns gray with age. They usually don't have wool on their faces and legs. The legs are slender and the feet are small. Both rams and ewes commonly have two or more horns, but ewes are sometimes hornless. The head is delicate and ram's horns are fairly massive for the size of the animal. The horns sweep upward from the head before spiraling backward and outward. The Hebrideans were originally predominantly a four-horned breed, and the general term four-horned can actually mean four, six, or even eight horns. But over the years, two-horned sheep have become more common. In 1973, the Rare Breeds Survival Trust identified Hebridean sheep as a breed in danger of extinction. At that time, only 300 animals remained. Since then, their numbers have increased greatly, and today they can be found across the UK. It is recognized as the sheep breed to use to manage fragile ecosystems. See, these sheep have a reputation for conservation grazing. They eat scrub, which would otherwise encroach on grassland. In fact, they love eating leaves and bark from downed tree branches, and they would actually prefer grazing in an orchard because they love apple trees and would eat those rather than eating the grass. So be careful about that. But they have a greater tendency to browse than other sheep breeds, which has made them useful in ecological projects where control of brush and weeds was needed. Now, Hebrideans have mostly been kept for ornamental purposes because of their striking appearance, but their wool is pretty nice too. The fleeces range from dense and coarse to fine and soft. The staple length is usually around two to six inches with a micron count of 29 to 38. So again, this yarn is gonna be awesome for making sweaters, coats, mittens, and other outerwear. But actually, this one might be okay for wearing around the neck and face. I don't find it too prickly at all, and it is so squishy and pillowy. So, that is a little bit about the black Hebridean sheep and yarn. 
All right, now we are going to move out of the Scottish islands and down into England. This is some yarn from the Hampshire Down Sheep. This is another two-ply yarn that was spun by Chris from the Witchwood Spinner Etsy shop. Um, this skein was $20 for 50 grams. It's less smooshy than the Hebridean yarn that I just talked about, but it's still very nice. It actually reminds me of South Down yarn, if you've ever felt that. Um, it has a lot of the same characteristics, has great elasticity while still being very lightweight and sturdy. And you can see it is the natural white color of the sheep. It's actually not too surprising that the Hampshire Down yarn reminds me of South Down yarn because the South Down is an ancestor of the Hampshire Down sheep. These sheep originated in the Hampshire region of Southern England in the early 1800s. This is another one that was bred primarily for meat. They are a cross between the South Down and the primitive feral sheep that originally lived in this area. So Hampshire Down sheep inherited hardiness and disease resistance, as well as a larger size. They also have a valuable fleece, which I'll talk about in a minute. They are mostly white with dark faces, ears, and legs. In fact, their faces and legs are the darkest of any down breeds. They have a Roman face with kind of a long neck and skinny but strong legs and big feet. Rams weigh about 300 pounds and ewes weigh around 200 pounds. So you can see these are quite a bit bigger than the tiny primitive breeds I was talking about earlier. Hampshire down fleece is short and strong. The staple length is around two to four inches, and the micron count ranges from usually around 25 to 29, putting it in the medium range. Um, the yarn I have does not feel prickly to me at all, so I'm sure it's on the lower end of that micron count. It's definitely springy and resilient, and it's also resistant to felting, much like South Down wool. So you might be able to machine wash it, although I would still wash it by hand. Um, it's got a matte finish. It's not a particularly lustrous uh, fiber. Um, I think this yarn might be nice for making socks. Um, I don't think I have enough here to make a pair of socks or maybe some shorty socks. Anyway, um, that gives you a little idea of what the Hampshire Down sheep and yarn are like. Next up is a sheep breed with a very unusual name, and that is Zwartbulls. This is a sheep breed native to the Netherlands, and specifically the northern region called Friesland. Their main use was for milk and cheese production, but over the years, Dutch dairy practices changed so much that the Zwartbulls breed nearly disappeared. By the mid-1970s, there were only about 250 purebred animals left. The breed was entered into the Dutch Rare Breed Survival Trust, and their numbers have steadily increased since then. Part of this breed's recovery has been due to hobby wool spinners, so shout out to the fabulous fiber artists who kept this breed going. The name Zwartables means black with a white blaze, and as you can see, they are elegant, tall, black sheep with an upright posture. Their most notable characteristics are a long neck and distinctive white marking that runs the length of their face. They also have white fleece that looks like socks on their legs, as well as white tipped tails. They are hardy and naturally friendly sheep who love attention. Their fleece is thick with plenty of crimp along the entire length of the fiber, and the fleece can be black to chocolate brown with sun bleached tips. Now, the Zwartbull's yarn I have here is some that I spun myself on my spinning wheel from a beautiful comb top that I bought from Blue Moon Alpacas on Etsy. And it was $20.50 for a pound of fiber. And this is what I've spun up so far. I feel like I've hardly made a dent in that top. So I've got a lot more to spin. It was a nice fiber to spin with a staple length of four to five inches. The micron count is around 30 microns or coarser, and it does feel a little scratchy around the neck. 
but it would be great for mittens, hats, and outerwear. It's definitely a sturdy yarn. Yeah, I would say this yarn is very dense. It's not particularly springy or squishy, but feels more firm and rugged. And it's uh, matte rather than very lustrous. So that is a little bit about the Zwartbulls breed and yarn. Okay, next is a sheep breed from close by where the Zwartbulls sheep originated. And this one is the East Frisian. Now, Zwartbulls are from Friesland in northern Holland, and East Frisians are from the area just to the east of that in northwestern Germany along the North Sea coast. So I bought this East Frisian yarn from an Etsy shop that is no longer selling, but I found another source for this type of yarn, and I'll link it down below. It looks like you can get a 200-yard skein for only $9. Anyway, as you can see, this yarn is dyed. No, the sheep are not pink. <laughs> this, this color is called Strawberry Fields, and it looks like it's mill spun, um, but it's 230 yards of worsted weight yarn. As far as the sheep breed, the East Frisians were also mainly raised for milk production. It is considered to be the world's highest producing dairy sheep, producing 1,000 pounds of milk over a 240-day lactation cycle. East Frisians are large, beautiful animals with kind of a chunky frame. They are usually white with a pink nose and thin tail. This skinny, bare rat tail is probably their most distinctive feature. Their heads and legs are generally clear of wool and they have pale hooves. An East Frisian in full fleece looks like a big ball of wool with skinny toothpick legs. Mature weight is between 150 and 200 pounds. These are highly specialized animals and don't fare very well in harsh environments. Yeah, they are pretty delicate animals despite their large size. They require meticulous feed to maintain their health. Lambing takes a toll on ewes because they often have three or four lambs at a time, and the lambs are prone to pneumonia. But even though they need a lot of TLC to thrive, they're still very popular around the world for dairy farmers. East Frisian fleece has characteristics similar to down breeds. It's got good memory, high loft, and springiness. The staple length is about three to six inches and the fiber diameter is around 28 to 33 microns. So that's in the medium coarse category. The yarn is not too scratchy, but it's probably, it probably wouldn't be good to wear around the neck for most people. However, it's very durable and would make good blankets and outerwear. And again, that is the East Frisian sheep and yarn. For the next sheep breed, we're going from northern Germany over to northern Poland along the Baltic Sea coast. And this is yarn from the Pomeranian sheep, also known as Pomernschaf. This is a very old breed of domestic sheep from the Pomerania region that is currently in Poland. The first records of this sheep breed could be traced back over 3,000 years. The breed was originally known as gray wool sheep, but was changed to coarse wool sheep. So those names tell you a little bit about the wool. It is gray and pretty rustic. The Pomeranian coarse wool sheep is a medium sized breed of domestic sheep. It's usually gray in color with a black head. The lambs are born entirely black and eventually turn gray. Pomeranian sheep have a straight nose, sturdy long legs, and a long woolly tail. They also have black tongues. They were originally used for meat, milk, and wool, and they're currently used mostly for meat and vegetation management. This is a pretty hardy breed, highly resistant against parasites, and can thrive in a lot of different environments but the Pomeranians almost vanished in the second half of the 20th century, and the total population of these animals dropped below 100. The breed was placed on the red list of endangered livestock breeds and has since 
recovered somewhat. It is still considered a rare breed though. And I purchased this yarn from Queen Conk Yarn and Fibers on Etsy, and it is 220 yards of sport weight. The price was $22.75. You can definitely tell this yarn is strong and tough. The staple length is five and a half to eight and a half inches with a diameter of 30 to 40 microns, which is definitely in the coarse rugged category. It actually reminds me a little bit of Icelandic wool. Whatever you make with this would be rock solid and pretty much indestructible. So that was a little bit about the Pomeranian coarse wool sheep. Okay, next we are going to the Bavarian Alps along the border of Germany and Austria and even into Italy. This yarn is from the Alpine rock sheep or Alpine Steinschaff. And this is the natural color of the sheep, kind of a grayish brown. And I got this from Queen Conk Yarn and Fiber on Etsy. It is a two ply hand spun yarn with 200 yards of DK weight and the price was $28.75. It's very nice and squishy and again on the rustic side so you probably wouldn't want to wear a scarf out of this around your neck. But still I think it's going to be a hard working yarn that would make beautiful durable outerwear. Now let's talk about the alpine rock sheep that produce this wool. They are perfectly suited for life in the high mountains of the Alps with hard hooves, sure footedness and incredible hardiness and good adaptation to harsh climactic conditions. They roam the high meadows where cows and other breeds of sheep don't go. Their presence compacts the soil and protects against erosion. They are a multi-purpose breed raised for meat, wool, and vegetation management purposes. The Alpine rock sheep is a lean, fine-boned, small to medium-sized mountain sheep with a Roman profile to the head. The legs are thin but strong. The ears protrude from the head and droop downward. Their colors are widely variable. They can be pretty much any color, white, brown, gray, black, and multicolored. Their legs and faces are free from wool and they do need to be sheared twice a year. Rams often have horns and ewes don't. By 1964, the population of this breed had fallen to below 1,000 animals. And in 1985, there were only a few heads left. But since 1991, breeders started carefully keeping track of them in small herds. Still, by 2009, the Alpine rock sheep was listed as endangered, and in 2014, it was listed as extremely endangered with a reported population of around 650 animals. Today, they are one of the world's rarest sheep breeds, but numbers are slowly increasing. Alpine rock sheep have a coarser fleece with a fiber diameter of around 35 to 40 microns. The staple length is five inches. So yeah, it makes a very sturdy, robust yarn that is great for household items as well as sweaters and accessories. It also felts nicely, so that's another idea for something to use it for. And that's a little bit about the Alpine rock sheep. All right, my next yarn is this gorgeous skein from the Brillenschaft sheep. I bought it from Queen Conk Yarn and Fibers on Etsy and the price was $34.75. I'm not sure if this was hand spun or mill spun, but the skein is 220 yards of DK weight and the color is a natural cream. Very beautiful. I wouldn't say it's super squishy. It's just a nice, sturdy, workhorse yarn. Now the Brillenschaft sheep that produce this yarn are very unique. The name Brillenschaft literally means spectacle wearing sheep. As you can see, they are mainly white in color and have black patches around their eyes, which gives them the appearance of wearing glasses. They have droopy ears and usually the lower part of their ears is black. 
Their lips and chin can also be flecked with black. Overall, they are medium-sized animals with thin legs and strong hooves. These sheep originated in Slovenia in the eastern alpine region of Europe and is the oldest sheep breed in the Tyrolean Alps. So it is a member of the hardy alpine mountain sheep breeds and is expert in climbing and grazing high alpine areas which are inaccessible to cattle. In the past, it was raised for both meat and wool production. During the 1930s, governmental policies targeted meat-producing livestock and sought to replace native breeds with more productive varieties. Fortunately, this breed survived thanks to the help of local farmers who protected their sheep. In the 1980s, only about 200 animals were left. Numbers are increasing today due to subsidies for farmers keeping the breed, but the Brill and Schaff is still a rare breed. It's now raised in Slovakia, Austria, Germany, Serbia, and Italy. Brill and Schaff wool is very good quality with a fiber diameter of 32 to 35 microns and a three to six inch staple length. And it's a silky appearance. The wool is extra oily, which probably contributes to its silky appearance. However, once the fleece is scoured, you don't feel that lanolin, so the yarn doesn't feel oily to the touch or anything like that. It feels in the medium coarse range, but again, it's very nice and sturdy. So that is the Brillenschaft sheep and yarn. Okay, and lastly, this yarn is from the Mocha Yarn Company and is made from 100% Romanian wool. The base is called Elena, and I got it from Fancy Tiger Crafts in Denver for $16 a skein. It is a 360 yard single, so it's not plied. It's just one single strand of wool fiber twisted into sport weight yarn. The most unique characteristic of this yarn is that it contains a lot of lanolin. I mean, you can feel the lanolin when you touch the skein. And that makes the yarn kind of stick together a little bit. So the wool is not scoured. It is cleaned and washed by hand with only water before it's spun into yarn. They recommend that you wash it before knitting with it and then again after you've finished your project. And that's supposed to soften it up quite a bit as well. This yarn is definitely squishy and pillowy. It's not as coarse feeling as most of these other yarns, but it does feel kind of stiff. Um, kind of reminds me of linen yarn, how it feels stiff before you wash it. It's not that stiff though, um, but I think it's because of the lanolin. Now let's talk about the Romanian sheep this yarn comes from. They are called Tigai sheep, at least that's as close as I can come in English. Um, there are two important sheep breeds in Romania, the Turkana and the Tigai. Over 50% of the sheep in Romania are Turkana and about 25% are Tigai. So it's the second most popular. And Tigai sheep are kept extensively in mountainous regions with large pastures. It's a multi-purpose breed, but is mostly known for cheese production. The Tigai sheep breed is a distant relative of the Merino and originated in the Carpathian Mountains. It's thought to be a descendant of sheep brought there by the Romans. They are a medium sized sheep with white wool with a brown, red, or white face and legs. Rams sometimes have horns that are long and spiral like Merinos and ewes often don't have horns or if they do, they are small. From 1950 to 1989, wool was the primary production objective of the Tigai sheep. Wool production played an important role in Romania because wool prices were supported by the government at three to four times higher than the world market. Since 1989, wool prices decreased to the world market level, which dramatically decreased the income of sheep owners there. Today, wool production is not that important due to lower prices, which often can't even cover the expenses of hiring sheep herders. Romania still employs shepherds, 
So that is the traditional way of life for a segment of the population. Also, political and economic changes in Romania since 1989 have caused drastic reductions in sheep. Um, numbers have decreased 44% since the end of communism. One survey of sheep farmers in 2013 indicated that 93% of farmers were satisfied with the milk production from their tigai sheep, but only 47% felt that there's a demand for wool production. And only 20% of the farmers actually make a profit from wool production, so most are not interested in improving that aspect of their sheep. So overall, the numbers of tigai sheep is still decreasing and it is in danger of becoming a rare breed. Tigai wool is in the medium coarse range with fiber diameters around 28 to 32 microns. And I'm not sure about the staple length. It's traditionally been used for making sturdy outerwear and I can definitely see making something like a sweater out of this yarn. So yeah, that is some interesting information about the Romanian sheep breed called the Tigai. And that is all I have for you guys today. Did you know about these sheep breeds? I'm curious if any of you have used yarns or spun fiber from any of the sheep breeds I talked about today. Let me know about your experiences or if any of them really piqued your interest and you think you might want to try it. Leave your comments and questions down below. As my semester comes to an end in the next couple of weeks, I'm hoping to get caught up with responding to comments and questions on my recent videos. As always, I'll include links to everything I talked about today in the information box right below this video for your convenience in case you want to check something out. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you next time. Until then, stay smart and have a sparkly week.